So we all know that sea level is rising. At least most of do or believe they do. Hundreds of millions of people are living very close to sea level. I come from the Netherlands. I actually lived more than half my life below sea level. In Manhattan alone, billions of dollars of infrastructure is built just meters from sea level. So we have reason to worry about sea level rise. But how do we know that sea level rise is real? Well, you can start... We had this before. Sorry, this is my fault. Wrong button. You can start building a tide gauge near the shoreline. Normally, it consists of a float attached to a wire, attached to a recording device. When the extent of the wire gets less, sea level goes up. Of course, such a tide gauge sees a lot of tidal variation, ocean tides. But that we can take out. What is left might indicate that sea level is rising. But how do we know for sure that sea level is actually going up? And it's not the tide gauge that is sinking. Because that can happen if we extract water, drinking water, groundwater, from underneath the tide gauge, it will start sinking. And so it does when you extract gas or oil. In Scandinavia, the opposite is happening. The land is actually lifting, making it look like sea level is going down. The lifting is because the Earth is relaxing from the ice load in the last glacial period. So, in order to know exactly if we measure sea level change, we need to monitor the vertical motion of this tide gauge. And this we can do by putting on the tide gauge a GPS receiver. The GPS receiver can tell you where you're going in your car. It can also tell you where the tide gauge is going, even when the motion of the tide gauge is ever so slow. So, with this method, we can tell what sea level is doing locally. But if you have one tide gauge, it tells you only what happens near you. It doesn't tell you what happens globally. It doesn't even tell you where it comes from. So what we need to do is install many of these tide gauges. This is a set of tide gauges from an international database. You see there are many of them. But are these tide gauges controlled for vertical land motion? Well, then, let's look if they have tide gauges. Miss a GPS receiver. If you don't have a GPS receiver nearby, we take them away. Now, we also need to know if they have a long enough time record, because we want to separate the climate signal, which is long-term, from shorter signals, like a Nino. So let's uh, take away the ones that have a record of less than, let's say, 15 years. Now we have very few tide gauges left to tell us if sea level is rising. Some of the coasts are not covered at all, and in the middle of the ocean there are very few, only at some islands. So we still don't know if sea level rise is a global phenomenon. So how can we solve this? The solution is simple, if not elegant. We simply put the tide gauge on the satellite and we replace the wire with a radar pulse. As the radar pulse travels through space and through the atmosphere to the sea surface and goes back, time is ticking. And this travel time tells us exactly how high the satellite is above the sea surface. We also put on this satellite another GPS receiver. This tells us independently how high the satellite is above some reference surface. The difference between those two heights is sea level. Now we have a satellite radar altimeter. And we can start measuring sea level everywhere in the globe, at least where the satellite is flying. We take a measurement every second 
to a position of three centimeters. The errors come from limitations of the instrumentation, from my knowledge of the position of the satellite, as well as that we have to take into account delays in the atmosphere, which we don't know exactly. This satellite is going around, and after 10 days, it will cover the globe entirely with measurements of three centimeters of height accuracy. Measuring three centimeters from an elevation of 1,300 1, kilometers. That's like measuring the span of the Golden Gate Bridge. Sorry, the, yes, the span of the Golden Gate Bridge to within the thickness of a human hair. Now we have 10 days of these inform this information. And if we average all these measurements over 10 days, we get global mean sea level over those 10 days. We do that another 10 days. And surely but surely, we build up a time series of global mean sea level. But with one satellite, at some point, the satellite runs out. It has a limited time span. Before that happens, we need to launch another satellite. And we have to make sure that while they are flying simultaneously, that they are measuring the same thing. So here in this plot, you see various satellites measuring the same thing while they're flying together. And the picture becomes clear. Sea level is rising. And it's rising at the rate of three millimeters per year over the last 25 years. But how do we know for sure that these satellites that we call the reference mission are not measuring some fake trend because there is something in their instrumentation? Well, that's why we are not just looking at these measurements. Scientists all throughout the world are looking painstakingly at the data of many altimeter satellites that have been operated since 1991 by several of the Earth's space agencies. HUMANSAT, at this moment, is operating two of them, JSON-3 and Sentinel-3, both under the Copernicus program of the European Commission. And the picture is clear. All of them show the same thing. The sea level is rising by three millimeters per year, and we even start to see an acceleration. But where is all this water coming from? For one thing, we are melting land ice. Glaciers are retreating everywhere around the globe. The edges of Greenland are rapidly melting. In Western Antarctica, the ice sheet is thinning. This moves mass from the land into the ocean. It is changing the gravity field of the Earth. And there are two satellites that measure exactly that, the changes in the gravity field that can tell us how much of the mass is taken away from the land and dumped into the ocean. And that can tell us how much sea level has risen just by melting the ice. You see that in this plot, and again you see a rising trend. Another reason why sea level is rising is because we are heating the oceans. Greenhouse gases trap heat in the atmosphere, and 93% of that heat ends up in the ocean. When water is heated, it expands. So that, too, will cause sea level to rise. We have hundreds of these floats, called Argo floats, drifting around the ocean. Regularly, they plunge down to 1,000, 2,000 meter deep, measuring along its path temperature and salt content. Then it comes up and sends their measurements to a satellite and then to a ground station. Collecting all this information, we can tell how much the oceans are heating and how much they will be expanding. 
that creates another plot, this red line. And again, we see a rise. About one millimeter per year, sea level is rising just by heating the red line. About two millimeters per year, the sea level is rising as a result of adding mass into the ocean because we are melting the ice, the land ice. Together, that gets three millimeters per year, the purple line. Now remember that independently we had also been measuring sea level from satellite altimeters. And that's this white line. And we see a striking resemblance. Not only give the exactly the same three millimeters per year, but even on shorter time scales we see the same thing. This gives us an enormous confidence in our measurement. Two completely different ways of measuring the same thing. We are measuring sea level rise of three millimeters per year over the last 25 years. But is sea level rising everywhere the same? And that's shown in this plot. Remember I told you that these satellites, the satellite altimeters are coming back every 10 days in the same spot. So at the same spot every 10 days you can make a trend at that location. The yellow colors here show, and the red colors show where sea level is rising. That's almost everywhere. In the Western Pacific, it's even more than three millimeters per year. It goes up to about 10 millimeters per year. And we think that is because of strengthening of the El Nino um, currents, strengthening of the process that spans oceans and atmosphere. There are some spots where you see some light blue, some drop near of ocean currents. We think that is due to freshening of water. We will study this precisely and figure out um, what is actually going on. But these kind of information will tell us more about sea level rise. Now, where are, is the impact of sea level rise the largest? Well, of course, it's very large in coastal areas with a dense population, in estuaries, like in Bangladesh or islands, low-lying islands, where people have nowhere else to go, like some of the islands in the Maldives. Also, coral reefs are inundating with a rising sea level that is eroding the coral reefs. The coral reefs that are already struggling from the heating ocean and then the acidification. So what have we learned here? Sea level is rising. Sea level is rising by about three millimeters per year over the last 25 years. We know there are two causes, melting of the land ice, water ending up in the ocean. The second is that the oceans are heating and thus expanding. And both of these things we can measure very well by satellites, by GPS, with GRACE, with satellite radar altimeters that we process here at GEMITSAT, and the communication satellites that bring the satellite information around. And all of this shows a continuous sea level rise. It's undeniable, it's relentless, it is irrevocable. As long as we are keep on heating our planet and our ocean and our pale blue dot. Thank you.